My wife and I wanted a place to store our salt and pepper shakers on our table for easy access. Rather than just sitting them on the table where they could get knocked over or whatever, I decided to make up this modest little shaker holder. It's a pretty quick and simple build and hopefully it will inspire you to go out and make your own shaker holder as well. With that said, let's get creative. I made pretty much this whole project out of this scrap piece of 2x10 pine I had laying around. I had made this template up ahead of time by um, kind of making circles around our shakers in the house and then just drew a line so I could cut it on my table saw sled. After I cut that out I took it over and made a center line so I could rip it down in half to get two blocks so I could cut it on the scroll saw. I added a little bit of spray adhesive to put the template on top and then I will tape them up. So I usually stack them together like about like this and then run some masking tape around the sides and then around it lengthways too to keep it from shifting too much back and forth or up and down kind of bouncing on top of each other. This helps me get a, a pretty accurate cut through both pieces and if it doesn't cut I'll take it over to the sander and make sure it all comes out the same. I just make sure my scroll saw blade is nice and tight and then I can get right into cutting it. You can also cut this on your band saw as well and that's actually what I did with the second half of it. I cut around the first curve and then finished it up on the band saw so, you, so I could see if both ways would work and they did. And then I cleaned them up on the sander. Then I just did a quick uh, check to see if I liked how they sat on there, and I was pretty pleased with it. So I traced around there with a pen around the salt, around the pepper shaker, and then I just drilled two holes. They don't need to be centered or anything, it's just to get the scroll saw blade in. And I did use my scroll saw. I guess you could use a uh, hole saws or a Forstner bit, but I don't have either one of those. So this is the option I went with. You can't really use a band saw, obviously. But uh, whatever you got to do to get those holes in there, um, whether it be the Forstners, the hole saws, or the scroll saw, that's what you need to do. After that's done comes everybody's favorite part, sanding. Here I enlisted the help of my oldest son because he wanted to help out with the project, so I let him do some sanding. Then you can just, uh, the template kind of sticks a little bit, depending, I guess it depends on what kind of adhesive spray you use, but sometimes I have some trouble getting it off, so I'll sand it. Then I took it over to my router table and just round, ran a round over bit around the edges of the base of the uh, shaker holder, just to give it a nice little rounded curve at the top. And I took the top piece that we had cut the two holes out of and ran it around the outside and I'll actually run that around the outside top and bottom and then I'll do the same on the inside top and bottom just to give it a nice um, curvy look. Here I just kind of uh, eyeballed it, lifted it up, kind of figured out where I wanted it to set, and then took a measurement to figure out what, how big I would need to make the stem in the middle. So I just took a little bit more of that scrap pine I had and cut out just a small piece. You can make it really whatever size you want, it just depends on how you want it to look. And then I just sanded it down. I was going to make it round, but I decided to just give it some neat edges to make it look a little bit more natural. Then I took it over and marked a center hole in the top, the top piece, the rings, um, so I could get a dowel down through there to hold it to the stem that would hold it to the base. I just used the top piece to help me mark the center of the next piece. It wasn't an exact science, but it, it did get me pretty close, and in the end result, it, I can't really tell the difference. 
then I stuck a dowel in just to kind of test it out and uh, see how it worked. There's a hole in the end of both pieces of the stem too to attach to the dowel in the top and the dowel in the bottom. And then I just glued it up, clamped it together, and let it sit for a while. I also did the same. I made a little corner or a little peak piece here to put on the top to give it a little bit more of a, of a feel. You can just cut that out of that scrap pine and you can really make it look however you want. I guess that's personal preference. I just made sure I cleaned the glue up, let it all dry, and then came back out a little later and glued the whole assembly together. Again, I just put some weight on there, not much. The clamp and this uh, bottom of my router seemed to, seemed to do pretty well. After it had dried, it came back out quite a while later and uh, added some stain to it. Gave it a pretty light stain. Got it nice and coated and let it dry overnight. And I came back out the next day and just took some spray lacquer and just lightly sprayed it. I think I put two coats on it and that was about it. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more of our videos, please subscribe.